Hello, I'm Vice Mayor Steve Kay, and today I'm here with the city's chief information officer, Eldona Velicenti, and we're going to talk a little bit about her position and Gigabit City and what an exciting thing that is for the city. So first I want to say welcome. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time, and let's start by having you just say a little bit about your work for the city. What does it mean to be the chief information okay, officer? Sure, that's probably a great place to start. So think of it in terms of information technology, anything that might touch information technology that's got to do with information technology, usually I'm called upon to do it. So that's everything from telecommunications, phone networks, desktops, applications that support the government, interfaces with the citizens, paying the bills, doing HR, and you know what, Vice Mayor, I can go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if it's IT, I get it. <laughs> so it's highly technical work. It's fairly and, technical. And before you came to the city, you did similar work in industry? I did. I did similar work. I've had actually many, many years in this industry. I, I worked in the uh, oil business for over 20 years, doing a lot of IT and how you explore and, and process chemicals. I was the first appointed CIO for the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and I did that for okay. six years. I worked as a CIO in the private sector in the chemical business, so frankly, I'm hoping that maybe this has been a good way to start, but I'll tell you, I've never had a more interesting job than this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. And, you know, everybody understands that, that uh, uh, technology is changing so rapidly, yes. but what we're most yeah. aware of now is this new initiative with a private company yeah. coming in to deliver gigabit speed yep. for all users. So explain a little bit about what that means Certainly. and then how we're going to go about it. Certainly. You know, uh, internally we've called this project Gig for Lex. Gig and for Lex. Okay. Gigs, because it was an easy way to talk about it. One of the things that's happening today, and if you just take a look at your children, your grandchildren, your whoever, everything that we do has some digital connection. Okay. And so let me define what is a gig. Good. When we talk about a gig. <laughs> A gig is one billion bits. So think of it as the 10th to the 9th power. That's 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10, 9 okay. times. Okay. Extremely, extremely fast. So that, so the speed with which bits Correct. go through a particular... Speed and capacity. Okay. So you have to think in terms of gigabit like a pipe almost. Okay. You, know, you can put so much water through a little pipe yeah. or a little tube and the amount of data that we're now processing will require more faster. Okay. Pictures. We want to stream traffic. Okay. We want to be able to stream pictures and meetings and analogies. It's no longer an analog world, it's a digital world. Yeah. You know, our students get their homework that way. They want to look at not only the geography out of books, but they want to look to see what's happening in Africa and real life pictures and whatnot. So the world is really changing dramatically. Okay, and most people now who have an internet connection, correct. even if they have a high speed internet, that is correct. how fast is that compared to a gig? Well, it's, it's probably just a rounding error. It's <laughs> slow compared to what we could have. So in other words, right now, people that have two bits or two megabits, okay. up and down. But it is what is called is not symmetrical. What you upload is not always what comes down. Because being on a traditional line these days is like being on a party line. You have to share it with your okay. neighborhood, your okay. neighbors. So you can tell when that pipe becomes congested. I have someone that actually works for government that says, look, my husband works from home. After 3 o'clock, he might as well not try to upload anything because all the kids are home from school and they're all doing something on the Internet. Okay. So you have a, a connection from your home at a, that will take data at a certain speed. That is correct. And then it intersects Sex with a... With a provider. A, a provider. Right. And that will take X amount of... That is correct. ...bytes per second. That's right. And it's going to be controlled by how much traffic. Okay. We talk about it as traffic. And a gigabit system Correct. allows for Spad, 10 times, 10 15 times. Billions of times. 
thousands of times. <laughs> okay, so faster. just yeah. Is it fair to say that if I had a gigabit connection, that I would never experience that yeah, drop off? No drop. Right. That's that that's correct. the main thing. That's the main Even thing. Even if I'm downloading a movie, a movie I'm playing a game. Right um, it, yeah. You know, one of the traditional examples is you t today's in today's environment. If you download a movie, it takes you about what a half an hour, maybe twenty minutes, twenty five okay. minutes. You'll be able to do it in thirty seconds. Uh -huh. So it's not only the speed, but it's the capacity mm -hmm. that allows mm -hmm. you to do that. Mm -hmm. So in today's environment, people say, well, why do we need that? You know, we don't need all of that yet. That's true. We may not need it today, but we are now dealing with a generation that has never known anything else except digital information. Mm -hmm. So the capacity and the need to do that is going to really, really be speeded up tremendously. Okay. And so... People are, are, of course, concerned, well, is the city investing in this? Is it private business? Is it a collaboration? Yeah, How's it going to work? Well, that's a great question. So let me tell you, we've been on this path now for over two and a half years. And what we did at first is we had to get educate ourselves. So in other words, is this something the city ought to build? We did an RFP. Are there investors that can come and do it for us? It was very clear after we did a couple of studies, the city couldn't do that themselves. Okay. We were looking at a report from one of the consulting firms that we had that said this is going to cost between 185 and $200 million just to do the city. That is not an investment the city can make. So then we started to look at, are there public-private partnerships? Is there a way to attract an mm -hmm. outside company mm -hmm. to come and do that? Because remember, we wanted to do two things as we started to walk down this path. Can we bring competition into the city? for present suppliers, mm -hmm. and secondly, can we build a new infrastructure? And, and so we were extremely, extremely happy when we were able to begin work with Metronet, who said, look, we would like to have a franchise, but what we're going to do is we're going to build you a new infrastructure. What does that mean? I, I've been asking around, when was the last time we built infrastructure? When we put in the gas lines, the water lines? You know, we're doing the sewers uh -huh, now. Uh -huh. But we've never built an infrastructure for telecommunications, really. Okay. Okay. So they're going to they're build going it out. They're to build it out. And you mentioned competition. And yes. I know that a lot of people yes. feel that while it's important to get this greater speed, what they really want right. is immediate relief right. so that yeah. they're not stuck with one only That's one provider correct, and they don't, have, they don't have an yeah. option. So one of the technologies you know, that we have presently is we were able to use the coax cable, the phone lines, mm -hmm. and then enhance it from both ends with technology to provide it for the internet. Okay. The company that we are working with now is going to build a brand new infrastructure. You know, okay. scientists in the business say that fiber networks will last 30 years, 40 years, maybe longer. Uh -huh. The only thing that will change is what I call the electronics at the end that control the speed okay. of how you're going to be able to process it. The electronics may have to be upgraded and updated as new technology comes along, but that's the beauty of the investment. Okay, so they're going to be basically installing fiber that's correct. cable, and is that going to be underground, above ground, a mix? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the most preferred way is to go pole to pole above ground because okay. you don't have to dig, you don't have to tear up the earth, mm -hmm. you don't have to do any of that. So it basically another, one more line Correct. on existing, on existing. poles. And for that, you know, since the city does not own a utility, that's something that the vendor will have to do with the companies that own the poles. Okay. So that's one way. The second way, I think there will be areas where they will have to to dig the street up. Okay, because we have some places that don't that, have poles. That is correct. In so, Most of in the suburban cases. areas. There is also a technology called micro-trenching and boring. Uh -huh. Micro-trenching is building a tiny little trench at the side, okay. not necessarily cutting the whole street in okay. those cases where possible, and then boring. You make a hole and you put a little scope down and try to figure out whether there's room to put okay. something else. Okay. So it's all of those things. So when we talk about construction, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to start tearing up the ground. So is it fair to say that typically where there are poles, they'll work out if and they they'll, can work and out they'll an run agreement, it, that's and it. they'll run it on poles, yep. which would be preferred preferred and it won't disrupt, I mean, people would Very be hardly aware. And then right. if there has to be digging, yeah. micro yes. trench, and sometimes if that's not possible, well, we'll, they we'll have, have to, to do, do like other utilities. Invasive. Right. Yeah. 
the thing though that is, you know, it, they go through all the permitting that has to be done with the city. So in other words, they have to get the permits. They have to show that they're remediated, mm -hmm. which is something uh, that is part of what the city does with any vendor that would right. come in. So they'll have right. to follow the ordinances and the rules that we have in place. Okay. And then it's timing of all of this. Well, you know, they were hoping to start doing some of this, but the weather got a little worse than what they <laughs> thought the last couple of weeks. Uh -huh. But I'll tell you, the first permit was issued yesterday in, in one of our easements to start doing some of that. We still have a few things to work out from, but the, the franchise, the franchise agreement is done. And like I said, the first permit was issued yesterday. Okay. So About six months, maybe, if the weather stays fine, to start signing up and maybe providing some services. So, and they're going to do sector by, by sector, sector yes, and they've yes. identified, I, I think they're starting on the north side of town? Well, yes, or, and what you, can, what you can do is you get on Metronet. Yep. Uh, dot com and they can they actually have a map up there for Lexington and so they've got some areas scoped out whether that might change or not over there but they're starting to do their engineer they're doing their engineering right now okay and if I were in sector one yeah. where they're gonna start they're gonna get that done and then I would have access or they're gonna wait till the whole thing's no built they're up? gonna have they're gonna do section by section and have access so okay. some people will get it sooner than others because, you know, one of the things that they have done as a vendor, and by the way, we talked to and vetted many, many folks in this. Okay. Um, nobody can do it all at once. Yeah. That effort is too big. Not only that, but we would not have the capacity <laughs> to do it all right. at once. So secondly, they want to do it by sector. At the same time, they want to be able to sign up customers because they got to pay the bills also, right? So gonna ha so get it, some it, done, get it absolutely, started. Absolutely, absolutely. We've asked them on how long we think that the project will take, and they said, well, it may be three years, it may be a little bit longer than that. Some of it depends on how you can make your agreements. Some of it depends on how you're be able, weather holding up, and they have to get easements, they have to get the permitting, so the regular process has to be followed. Okay, well, yeah. all that's great. So GigLex is coming. Yeah, GigLex is coming. And we're excited about it. We I appreciate too. your taking the time. Thank you. And I thank all of you for watching. Thank you.